I'm taking a break from my film. I'm gonna get the sauce started. I got a friend coming over for some dinner later, so I want to give it some time to sit in the fridge before I serve it. And let all the ingredients blend together, you know. Anyway, I got a little olive oil and butter going over here. And I'm gonna get started on my garlic. And I'll be back in a minute. Just threw my garlic on there. I got I like it right between low and medium for this kind of stuff. I'm gonna throw some salt on here. I got a bunch of salt, bunch of black pepper ground on there. I'm gonna add a little bit more butter. And I want a bunch of butter going, you know, it's gonna be absorbed by that onion, which I'm gonna hurry up and chop up quick. I cut some slots on this onion before I chop it, make it fall into pieces a little easier. And I had to move this uh, pan off the heat for a sec. That's my onion, use just about all of it. And I added a tiny bit more butter here. Uh, just seems to dry up a bit. And I got my heat going again. I'm gonna throw my onion on here and uh, throw a whole bunch of sea salt and black pepper on that too. With that salt and pepper, I'm also gonna throw in here some uh, basil, oregano, and rosemary, just a bit of each. And uh, I like to season the sauce a couple times throughout the whole process. This, this is like the first time around. Kind of sprinkle down about that much and I'll mix it all in. I was uh, using the wrong pan. That one was uh, too small. That's the, little, the pan I used to reheat my pasta, and this is the one I used to cook my pasta. Uh, and I also bumped the heat up a tad. This is looking just how I like it. Like, just trying to start sticking to the pan. And uh, I'm gonna go ahead and toss my meat on here. So, yeah, I'm gonna take my red pepper and some of that fennel seed, a bunch of black pepper, salt, and paprika, and just cover that meat real quick. Like that, you got your uh, from left to right. It's paprika, uh, fennel seed, red pepper, and then covered with uh, that other one, black pepper. I'm really gonna chop all this seasoning kind of like into the meat, folding it into that layer of seasoning, and that'll kind of seems to make the fennel seed clump in with the meat a little bit. So it almost makes it kind of like a sausage on there. And uh, I'll get that going for a while. That's doing its thing over here. Uh, I'll probably bump it up to medium heat, I suppose. I'm gonna go ahead and chop up these here mushrooms after I give them a little rinse, of course. So uh, before I forget, um, I was just about to drain my meat here, which I'll do in a minute. You know, get some of that juice out of there. Uh, but I almost forgot. I gotta chop up a couple of these sweet banana wax peppers and the roasted bell peppers too. I like that for the peppers. Chop those up quick. As that meat finishes up. Um, I'm going to go ahead and toss in those peppers. I probably should have tossed those in a little earlier, but uh, go ahead and do that quick. And I'm also going to hit it with some of these, uh, some more rosemary, basil, and oregano. Another round of seasoning. I go a little light on the rosemary, and then I have equal amounts of uh, oregano and basil on there. That meat's done. Peppers are starting to do their thing. And uh, I'm going to try to drain this. I'm just going to place a knife along the edge and lean it over the sink. And uh, I doubt I'll get more than a few drops out of it, but go ahead and do it anyway. Like a few drops in there that fell out. That's about it. Anyway, I'm gonna toss in all these mushrooms next, uh, and then I'll throw in a little sea salt. I'm gonna turn the heat down just a tad, I guess. It's kind of to the, the second M and medium, and uh, get this stuff kind of stirred together. And we have to keep a real close eye on these mushrooms because you know if they get overcooked, they get all mushy. And uh, it's just a perfect time to to stop the cooking. Which you know what we'll do is. Um, I don't have enough room in the pan, but I'll switch to a pot and we'll throw the, uh, right, right when these mushrooms are done cooking, we'll throw the whole thing in the pot and then we'll dunk it all with the Arcana tomato sauce. And that'll stop the cooking process. Mushrooms are just almost there. And, uh, I like to always be sliding my knife, uh, you know, right on through the middle of the pan. You know, it keeps the pan real clean. And you can keep your food rotating. Rotating through the heat. And, uh, yeah, in just a minute here, I'll get out my pot and tomato sauce. It's the arrival of the uh, the sauce that comes off of the mushrooms, so that's a good sign that the mushrooms are done. So I gotta get ready here with my uh, for my transfer. Back my heat up to medium as I add this sauce, and then <clears throat> one thing I like to do to get every little drop of sauce out of there is to go ahead and take the can of olives, and you know pour the olive uh, sauce or whatever olive water, I guess, into the into the jar and then shake it up with the lid on, you know, and I'll get every last little bit of sauce out of there. Now we're just going to let this thing simmer for a while, you know, until it starts uh, bubbling a bit, and then I'll bust out my Romano and Asiago cheeses. I'm going to 
throw in just a little bit more uh, rosemary, basil, and oregano here. Uh, just keep it well seasoned and keep it going. And you can see it's just starting to bubble a little bit. And uh, if it were to start bubbling too much more than that, I'd turn the heat down a bit. I'm just going to let go for a bit. I'm thinking maybe a half hour or hour or so. I'll turn the heat down just a tad. And you know, I don't want to make these mushrooms uh, get too overcooked or anything. I want them to keep their texture. Um, yeah, I'll probably turn the heat down just a tiny bit. It's important, you know, to remember not to let the sauce stick. So you gotta keep stirring it once in a while. And uh, you'll know you're getting close when, uh, <clears throat> when you pull some out of there. You don't really get much in the way of drips coming off of it. This is still gotta go a little longer, I think. But it's starting to look like some kind of sauce, I think. So uh, while the sauce does its thing over there, I'm going to go ahead and grab these two cheeses, my Romano and Asiago, and I'm going to go ahead and grate them up. And you know, I do have one of these things that came with the boat, um, but it's such a pain to clean it out and everything afterwards that uh, I think it's a lot easier to just take the serrated blade and just kind of go across it a bunch of times. And it's, they're really hard cheeses anyway, so they just crumble. So I'm going to get to work on that. I think I'll probably use all of that Asiago and most of the Romano. By the way, I'll, I'll tell you in a minute. So there's my cheeses, the Romano and Asiago. Uh, and I was going to tell you, um, you know, Alfredo sauce, all it is, and you probably know this anyway, but just figured I'd point out, um, you can make your own, because uh, all it is is just butter, uh, and then a little cream, and then these hard cheeses, the Asiago and Romano, and maybe some of the, uh, the Parmigiano Reggiano, although I prefer to take that and grate it afterwards, because it seems like you lose some flavor if you cook it very much. Um, but anyway, these will melt real smooth, and I'm just going to go ahead and chuck them right into my sauce, which is bubbling pretty good, as you can see, even though I turn the heat down a bit. Um, so I'll just toss that cheese right in the middle here, and it'll kind of melt. It will melt, and uh, I'll keep it stirring a bit. And, uh, well, I guess I should actually check this first. I'll probably cook the sauce a little bit longer. I think it's been about 20, 25 minutes that I've been uh, simmering it like this. Or letting it simmer. Um, so I'll probably let that thicken up a little bit more. Um, but then I'll just chuck that cheese right in the middle there. So I'll, I'll be back to you in a bit. I think I'm finally happy with the consistency of the sauce. It's probably just been another five minutes or so since I just showed it to you. I like how it's sticking to the knife pretty well. And you know, the method I use to reheat it, because once this is done, it's going into the fridge. I'm not going to eat right away. It, you know, as it sits in the fridge, all the flavors kind of mixed together more and it just gets that much tastier. Um, but let's see. When I do reheat it, I like to just uh, throw it in the pan with some butter and olive oil. Um, and if it's a tiny bit, you know, any little extra wateriness will just be removed in that process of reheating it. Uh, and then it's also, while I'm heating it in the pan, after it's gotten pretty warm, um, I like to grate my Parmigiano Reggiano cheese on there and then throw the cover on it for a minute or two. Maybe a little bit of that cheese hits the pan, and uh, it's like the frying of the noodles makes it almost smell like a little lasagna in there. Um, but anyway, I'm going to get this cheese in here. So there's the Asiago and Romano. I'm just going to kind of push it towards the center of the pan a little bit. I don't really want it sticking to the sides right away. And as it melts, like right when it really starts melting, I'm going to mix it in, and then I'll just chuck this whole thing into the... Well, I guess I'll let it cool off on the counter for a bit. Um, but then it's going to go into the fridge for a while. But uh, yeah, that cheese will just melt real smooth. And that's how it looks after just a minute or two. And you'll notice it doesn't melt all stringy like mozzarella. I mean, maybe it's a tiny bit stringy, but not really. It'll just kind of become part of the sauce after a bit. But I'm going to go ahead and kill the heat and just let this chill for a while. If I throw a lid on there. And uh, thanks for watching. I hope you guys enjoy.